Right, so welcome everybody. Let me move this a bit. Um, <clears throat> thanks for coming. It's really exciting to see a bunch of people here. Um, just first up, I want to say that sometimes, and I'm sure you're all familiar with this, practice changes sort of in a particular direction, and then kind of policy frameworks have to play a little bit of catch up. And I think what this is doing is, is just trying to put a, a sort of secure grounding to existing practice. So it's actually all about things that, that teachers are doing already, but we're trying to put some processes in place that support that and can make that sharing even more exciting. So it's not really a kind of a, a crazy new thing that we're proposing, but it's just underpinning the really great practice that's already happening. So let me get into the slides. Now, don't look at this now. You obviously all have a copy of this. And my slides are really just some screenshots from the book to highlight a few things. Um, the first thing to highlight is what actually are open educational resources, or OER, as we say. And the definition is here, our definition is here. Open educational resources are free learning resources that have been openly licensed and can be used or reused for free. Now, um, what does that mean? So firstly, it's not a kind of a Leicester thing that we dreamt up in, in one afternoon. Um, it's actually a worldwide movement, and I leave you to read that, which is a statement from uh, the UNESCO 2012 Paris OER Declaration. The whole OER thing is about 10 years old, and it grew out of other things. But, you know, there's, there's a big... Um, thing going on there internationally. And one of the really important things is, is one of is the last sentence, they improve cost efficiency and quality of teaching and learning outcomes. Um, so you know, hopefully we'll see some of that today. So I just want to very quickly, um, I think this is my only sort of proper slide that doesn't come directly from this, it summarizes some of the bits. But here are some of the, the reasons why we want to engage with OER. And I think you'll recognize some of these, again, from, from other angles, from pedagogical angles or from ways you think about, you know, how your schools run, how you interact with staff and colleagues and so forth. Um, and I think these are all things where OER can play a role. They're not solely brought about by OER, but OER is, is a really interesting way of feeding into this. So I'll just leave that there, and it's all in here anyway. So the guidance is structured in four, the main guidance document that you have is structured in four parts. Um, this all came from the first bit, which is just open educational resources and the school sector, and then there's something here about understanding open licensing. And maybe kind of licensing sounds a bit scary, but one of the really great things about OER is that there are some really simple licensing frameworks that you can use that really help to massively, massively clarify this whole idea of sharing and how you want to share. Um, this is just a paragraph from, from the resources. I'll leave you to, to read this. But one of the key ideas in this open licensing and sharing is actually attributing and be attributed. So it's actually a really simple principle, what most people want. We want to be attributed for the work that we do. Um, and also, you know, by the same token, we should attribute other people where we use their work. And that, that really simple statement underpins um, a lot of this work and a lot of the licensing. Um, oh, these are slightly in the wrong order. Uh, finding and remixing is the third part. And it shows you some really simple tools like Flickr, to find open educational resources. So here's a set of images that I found on Flickr, that we found on Flickr in, in the use, in the production of these, these resources. And you know, you can just use this kind of stuff with certain providers around acknowledging people and so forth. So that's one of the really nice things. You can find, you can use common search tools that you're probably already familiar with, or that some teachers will already be familiar with. And um, can use them to build up your educational resources. So then the fourth part of the um, OER guidance are some more ideas for schools, how to actually openly license and sharing your resources. How do you do this on a school level? How do you do this on a policy level? And Josie will say a lot more about that later on. So this really kind of brings me um, to the end. 
um, the two key takeaway bits from this, these first kind of 10-15 minutes is what are open education resources, free learning resources that have been openly licensed and the key idea that openly licensing is not just to do with attribution but a big part of it is attribution, is acknowledging and being acknowledged for the work that you do. So um, as a kind of practical example here's my presentation, it's licensed under a particular Creative Commons license, that means you're free to use my presentation for whatever purposes you like as long as you acknowledge me. I've used materials from the book so then in the second bit I'm acknowledging that, I'm saying the presentation uses materials from the OER guidance for schools and that's the attribution for that. Um, yeah, so my email address is there, I think both Josie and myself are really, really happy to receive any kinds of um, emails about clarification or whatever they may be, ideas, suggestions. Um, so I think, dearest, if there's any specific questions now for clarification, then we can take them. Otherwise, we'll move on. What to know? <laughs> Thank you.